out for eight days. Wow. And across the lake they were out for 11 Gee, days. Uh, Bill took a picture the day we were evacuated, the, the smoke billowing up and the sun was going down. Beautiful yeah. picture, yeah, but, yeah. It's, but it's smoke. Yeah. And we're at the back and then you see the ashes come down. Yeah. So we went for a boat ride down the lake. There was our neighbor, my husband, me, and the little guy. We're going down and at the Narrows, mm -hmm. and as you're going by, they, they, they burn the, the trees were burning, eh? And it's just like, woof, well, this way, woof, 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 woof. I should, like, like in the matter of seconds, it was, and then we're going through the Narrows, and right in front of us, it jumps the lake. I was like, I think we better get out of here. Wild Exodus Glamping Campground in Timmins, Ontario. Home of glamour. Cigars, wine, iPhones, cheese, butter, olives, and ch fish. I'm the special guest of the day. I will present you the etiquette of drinking wine. First of all, you take a glass. You dance with it. You listen to it. Then you smell it. Then you slurp it for the taste. Then you taste it for real. And now for the main course. We will show you how to cut and eat a steak with dignity. First you take your fork, second from your right. Place your index finger on the back of the fork. Then take your steak knife, not your butter knife. Insert the fork into the steak about one inch down. Take your cutting knife and with your index finger on the top of the knife, gently apply pressure until you have cut through your first piece of steak. Now you'll notice that that piece is far too big. Put the fork into that piece and place that piece into your mouth. Use your tooth to cut through the steak. dining, as in all other areas of life, one should be considerate of one's neighbors. Tasha, would you like a glass of wine? He does not. We may proceed. Forever and for always, I'm gonna get you good. Come on over.
Man, I feel like a woman. That don't impress me much. From this moment on. Honey, I'm home. You're still the one. Don't be stupid. You know I love you. Love gets me every time. No one needs to know. You win my love. If you're not in it for love, I'm out of here. So we are here at the uh, gold mine tour in Timmins, Ontario. I'm just at the top of the head frame here. I have an incredible view of the city. Behind me is a giant hole, but it's nothing like the dome mine on the other side of town. It's actually a mile wide, several thousand feet deep. And it's so deep, in fact, that planes are not allowed to fly over it because there's a, a pressure change. If you look on top, there's uh, motors on top and it goes up and down uh, with two sets of motor. There's a lot of safety in that, that machine here. Yeah. Uh, I always tell the people when you, we go down, we get, you know, like it kicks out, we got ways to get you out of there. Okay. Sometimes it will take you a couple of minutes, sometimes it will take you a couple of days. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm only kidding with that one. We're not going fast. Can we go faster? Can you open your lights here? You guys know. Get you guys in here. Now we're gonna go down to the drills, the drills okay? Okay, we're going 10,000 kilometers an hour at the underground mine tour at Timmins, Ontario. This is uh, a totally different experience than uh, the Sudbury mine. This is much, uh, this is much scarier, actually. I'm pretty scared. Very Right now, right now we got two different machines here. It'll take about 34 to 36 holes to drill. And they'll drill some of them holes with bigger holes in there. That's what they call a nine hole cut. 10 cents an hour is more than you're worth. <laughs> First I gotta, I can't get my hand dirty. Look, with all these health concerns, I'm hardly making a profit. I think you should just get to work. Okay, I'm and just gonna do sir. Yes, boss, yes sir. <laughs> I'm gonna put the water, it runs by air and water, okay? Water, and then air, okay? That's what, it, now these days are different, eh? Yeah. Different machine. That's the old type of machine. All right, let's go. You gotta go dig another drift. You know, at yeah, the end sorry, of the- Go for it, boy. It's all yours. All right. Holy crap. <laughs> Heavy. Oh. Heavy. All right. I don't think my thing's the life for me. I'm gonna stick with keyboards and mics. All right. A couple of minutes to crack, minutes. Then watch your heads there, right? Are you ready? A little bit of story on that mine here. There, if you drive, all the drift there is in the mine and the race is there, if you drive from here, Timmin to Toronto and come back halfway, that's how many drift there is in the, on the mine here. Mm. A whole, uh, like this. If you, uh, it's almost a mile deep, this mine here. Okay. What right below us, I say about maybe 50 feet below us, it's full of water, it's all flooded. So okay. they closed it down in 1968, eh? and they, they reopened the years after, but they really closed it down again. That's what you call a vein, okay? A vein is where the gold will, will hang around. That's why sometimes, years and years ago, they used to take about 10, 15 to 20 years to make a stove. You got the equipment over there. Yeah, I got I the brought machine. some Amex with me. Oh, you got some Amex? Well, just load it up into the back of the train. I got some stick powder there. I got there. bolognese, we call it, and stick powder. 50-50? 50-50. Okay. Okay, my bud. He's got 40 years in the mine. I've got 15 minutes. So I, I'm officially a miner now. Oh, okay, there's about thirty-five thousand dollars in there. Wow! Wow! Yeah. 
We're standing at the side of Highway 101 between Timmins and Chaplow in an area which obviously was affected by the recent forest fires up here. And uh, this is, this is, you know, this is part of the reality of living in the north. There's so much forest here that this is part of the cycle of life up here. Um, the people here are strong, they will continue, they will rebuild. Watch your step here. It's a little cheap. You can't even keep him anymore. There's a history uh, of the Chapel Ground Gamers of first habitants, fur trade, the logging industry. Here's you can see the carriage on this here. When they used to bring the cut the logs. The pictograms uh, uh, from on uh, Missinabi Lake Provincial Park. Logging started uh, uh, 1948, 49, Lafreniere and Son, and then Martels. And uh, Miss, uh, Lake Missinabi 55, Martels about the same time too. They had one here. There's a lake, we're seeing lakes on the other side that they had uh, one at the south end, one at the north end. Because it was easier back then to bring the, the mill to the logs compared to the other way around. In 1925, uh, they decided to, to uh, do this little land here to uh, be able to preserve wildlife. So if one part of uh, the province or country, they need a, a marten or a, a mink, they would take it from this region, trap it, a couple, and bring it to another region where it could repopulate the, the area. Okay. And uh, for 80 years, there was no trapping, no hunting in here, unless it would interfere with either CPR uh, beaver dams would be trapped right. for the dams because it would ruin the railroad tracks or the roads itself. You're an outfitter, but you're primarily interested in the uh, na natural natural photographer. You want to sort of yes, yes. When I uh, when I started this, I uh, my idea was to hike, bike, and photography. Now, if you want to hike on foot, you want to ride your pedal bike, you want to ride an ATV. There's Tons, tons of roads to do this. Just by the shore here, by the pump house, there is a wild orchid, and it's brilliant colors, it's really unique shape, so eye-catching, just stands out in the forest so much. I don't know, I'm a little overcome by its beauty. Wow, 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 wow. Oh yeah! Oh baby, I love it when the bees come to see me. Party people, this is Easy MJ down here at the site of an ancient glacier bed. We're looking over the ruins 
of some underwater rivers that existed 9.5 million years ago. All of this stuff would have been in great flux, smashing around, destroying everything in its path. But today, these boulders are calm and tame. You can walk right up and pet them. Now that's some good bouldering. So Forty-one years ago, Bill Young, an enterprising young gentleman who settled in Wawa, decided to set up a general store, offering everything in the known universe, from flutes to animal skins to candy bars and chocolat. Of course, this is a must-stop destination in the municipality of Wawa, if not for at least this one major reason, pickle fudge. In the true spirit of the general store, this place offers a little bit of everything. For example, high heel piggy banks, wind chimes, children's bathrobes, outdoors hats, recycled knives, skunk hats. Every imaginable type of fishing lure. Moose and delicious homemade summer sausage. And of course, pickle fudge. Thank you. Invented by Anne Celine McKinnon, who refuses to appear on camera because her hair doesn't look good today. Mmm. Now that tastes like Northern Ontario. We're here today in front of the world famous Young's General Store with Roger Parsons from Motorcycle Manager. Welcome, Roger. Thanks, Mike. So you just rode up, uh, what was it, 12 hours of riding? Yeah, from Milton from to Walla. Amazing. What did you think of the last part of your trip from Sault Ste. Marie up to Walla here? Oh, it was amazing. I've never seen uh, scenery quite like that and I wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah, in Ontario to boot. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I was really impressed. Cool. So we're headed out to do uh, 129 tomorrow. Today we're just going to leisurely coast back down Lake Superior. Yeah. Check out some sites, find some nice places to stop, report back to people. But 129, that's the one to beat. That's the one I'm looking forward to. Yeah. That's what I came for. Okay, awesome. So this is Old Woman Bay, what do you think? It's gorgeous. Yeah. I'm just gonna go get us some french fries to enjoy this quick. Yeah, make it quick. Okay. <laughs> Where the hell is my bike? No. No! Stuck in the sand.
spent a day riding down the eastern shore of Lake Superior from Wawa. I have to say I was super glad to ride with you today. <laughs> it was like two dolphins at play, Surging jumping through, through the asphalt surf. Oh my god. Past the bath salts. Yeah, perhaps it was <laughs> perhaps it was more like two majestic iron steeds conquering the vast wilderness of you know, well, they're more aluminum, but that doesn't sound steeds. romantic, does yeah, it? Yeah, no, it doesn't. Well, we try to do it authentic. Yeah. We don't, uh, we're not preparing food that is Americanized or Canadianized. We try to do it authentically as it is in Austria. So what does that mean really? Like the schnitzel and all of these foods, how do we get the, these really authentic tastes? What's sort of the base of this cuisine? Uh, a lot of it that we are using ingredients that are from Europe. So we bring in like our sauerkraut from Europe, bring in our pickles, our mustard from Europe. The recipes are handed down through the family or uh, taken from relatives or people like that so that we can actually do it authentically. The Salzburger Hof is one of the most romantic places in Northern Ontario. Mm. It brings to mind a certain romantic tune from many years ago. How deep is your love? How deep? I really need your love. Cause we're living in a world of fools Bringing us down When they should all just let us be We belong to you and me Da 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 Highway 129, we came out here today just to ride this one highway. And I totally oversold it, but I had to lure you here somehow. So without, you know, the veneer of Ontario tourism screwing it up, what did you think? Highway 129, we're about halfway up, what do you think? Well, yeah, it might share the same number as that famous highway down in Tennessee and Georgia, uh, North Carolina, but uh, it's quite a different animal. It's uh, a lot more sweeping curves for the beginning part. Uh, nice scenery, but uh, further down for the last five or six, seven miles maybe, it was just absolutely stunning. It was beautiful, uh, pretty dramatic corners and elevation changes. Uh, you really got to watch what you're doing, but the scenery is so uh, exciting. It's, it's hard to uh, go fast and you know, you're too busy looking at the scenery and enjoying that too. Yeah, almost begs to be done three or four times just to make sure you get everything. Just as we've done today. Yeah. 